Today I'm going to build a moxin vise using this kit that you can purchase for under $40. This kit comes with everything that you need to build a quality moxin vise. It also comes with a set of instructions and the only thing that you need to provide yourself is some wood. You can use any kind of wood that you have. So I'm going to go look at my lumber sack and see what I have to work with. All right, let's see if this board's going to work. Uh, the instructions that came with the hardware suggested that the front jaw be 23 and a half inches wide. And then the back jaw is going to have two tabs that are going to be used for clamping. And each one of those tabs is three inches long. So that's an added six inches onto the back piece. So that's 29 and a half. Oh yeah, all right. So I have an inch and a quarter left over from this board. Perfect size, gonna go clean it up now. Before trimming these pieces to final width, I'm just going to joint one edge. It looks like it's been jointed already, but when I run my square along the edge, there's light shining through all over the place. I don't have a jointer, so I use my tapering jig, and I just clamp it so that I feel a little bit running along the edge of the jig here. And when I uh, do such thick material on, on this jig, I just have to put a little spacer or riser block on the back of these clamps to create the perfect leverage for these clamps. All right, now I'm just gonna clean this up. Now that I have one edge that is completely square, I can use it to reference against the fence of the table saw and clean up the other edge and get this to final width. The instructions suggest at least four inches, and this is really just up to you, kind of depends how tall you are or how tall your workbench is. Um, there's really just no set rule here. Just do what feels good to you. The pieces are now ready for some layout lines for the holes for the hardware. So the first thing to do is find the center of the boards. These are four inches wide, so two inches is the center. I'm going to mark that on either end of the front jaw. Now the instructions say to mark two and three eighths in from the ends of just the front jaws. Now it's going to be really important that the front jaw and back jaw line up correctly. So in order to make sure that these two holes are going to line up, I'm going to just transfer this two and three eighths inch mark from the front jaw onto the back jaw by lining up these pieces, making sure there's the correct amount of overhang. So I know that I left over three inches on either side. And I'll take my combo square again. I'm going to line it up on that two and three eighths inch mark that I had just put out there on the front fence. Line it up and bring it across onto the back jaw. I'll do that on both ends. All right, so, oh, I didn't find the center of this yet, but that's easy, just two inches, boom, and boom. All right, so now these holes are going to line up. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is because the front jaw is actually not going to have a round hole, it's going to have an oval hole. So I'm gonna take that two and three eighths inch mark that I drew out there, and I'm going to mark a quarter inch on either end of that mark, right on the center line. And I'll do that on both ends. Now these two marks are where I'm going to drill out my holes to create the oval hole for the front jaw. I'm using a really dull bit and it's burning like crazy. Uh, yeah. I moved the board over to that second quarter inch line that was off of the original two and three eighths line that I had made. And now I'll just drill that out, elongating the hole. Now I'll just use a chisel to clean up those two pointy parts to create the oval. Mm -hmm. 
before moving on, let me just do a test and see if everything is fitting nicely. This is getting a little hung up. One second. All right, perfect. All right, so this is why I had to mark out the lines on the back jaw earlier because I can't really use these ovals as a reference now for where to drill the corresponding holes. So that's why you have to do that step earlier on. All right, now I'm going to drill out the back jaw. I want to recess this nut on the inside face of the rear jaw. So I'm going to use a one inch Forstner bit and I'm going to go just slightly deeper than the thickness of this nut so that it will be fully recessed into the board. Man, what a difference between a sharp bit and a dull one. This was a bigger bit. It's one inches over three quarter inches and it's super clean. Oh, I gotta get a new three quarter inch Forster bit or at least figure out a way to sharpen it. Now I have to swap back out to that dull three quarter inch bit so that I could drill all the way through and finish up the holes. So the hole is drilled all the way through. There's a three quarter inch hole that's all the way through and a one inch recess hole over here. In order to uh, recess the bolt fully into there, I'm just going to put the bolt on here, drop this down into the hole, and I'm going to scribe around the nut. All the hard parts are done, and now just to add a few small little details, on the front jaw, I wanna cut a bevel in the top front, and that is so when I'm actually using the vise, when I'm using a saw cutting this way, this is the front, the, the jaws just won't get in the way of my tools. So I just set this to a random angle and distance uh, that looked okay to me, and I'm gonna cut it away. That bevel looks pretty sweet, no? So uh, the way that the vise works is that you clamp the back jaw onto your work table after you install all the hardware, obviously. And if you leave the extensions like this, your clamps might get in the way of your work. So there are a few ways to fix that. You can either drill some holes in the extensions and that way you can put clamps through the holes, or I'm going to just cut away at a little section over here to create some room for the clamp heads. I couldn't raise the table saw blade high enough to finish up that cut, so I'll just finish the cut with a handsaw. A mox advice would really come in handy for clamping this piece right now. Before I can install the hardware, the instructions say that I need to clean them with denatured alcohol. The instructions also mention that all the parts are made from untreated steel, which means that they could possibly rust. So they suggest using a rust inhibitor. 
I am a huge fan of the specialist line from WD-40, specifically this long-term corrosion inhibitor. Simply spray on any metal parts and they will be protected from rust and corrosion for up to a year if left outdoors or two years indoors. If humidity is an issue in your garage, like mine, this long-term corrosion inhibitor is a great solution to keeping your tools rust-free. Everything is nice and coated now, so it's time to install the hardware. The holes that I made that fit the nuts in the back jaw go on the inside face. So I'll just thread this onto here just a little bit and set it into place. Now I'll keep screwing it until it comes out through the back. Then lock it into place with a washer and another nut. Awesome. And I'll just repeat the same thing to the other side. In order to use the vise correctly, you want to make sure that you're aligning it with the edge of your workbench. Because if it was pushed forward, you wouldn't be able to clamp in a tall workpiece. So this needs to be completely flush so that way you can clamp tall uh, pieces. So there are a few ways that you can do this. I think that it might be an interesting and cool way to put on these little tabs onto here that you could just push it and it quickly references the edge of the workbench. So I'm just gonna go and screw those on. I just sanded the tabs to shape and I broke all the edges just to make everything smooth and now I'm going to finish them up with some Danish oil. So they say not to put any finish on the inside to maximize the gripping power of the vise. So I will just apply it on the outside. All right, finally time to assemble it all. First I'm gonna just screw on these tabs. I drilled oversized holes in them so that the screws will go through it and that way I can turn them and lift them out of the way in case I ever need to. So it's tight enough so that it will have a positive stop against here, but it's loose enough that I can fold them out of the way in case for some reason I ever need them out of the way. Cool. Before putting on the front jaw, I'll just clamp it down so that it doesn't tip over. And I'm actually going to leave the inside of the jaws bare for now. I'm not going to put on any leather or crubber. I know it's something that some people put on inside. I'm going to see how it works without it. Now put on the front jaw, washers, and the knobs. So why use a Moxon vise? So this is the reason why I wanted to build one. So when I was cutting dovetails, I needed to have a good way to clamp boards vertically. And a Moxon vise is a great tool to do that. I know this is a short piece, but you can have longer pieces going all the way down. So if you're sawing this way um, in the end of a board, this is an amazing way to hold a piece vertically like this. Another reason why I needed a moxin vise was an easy way to clamp angled materials like tapered legs or something. So there was one time where I was planing down a tapered leg and I couldn't find a good way to clamp it down while planing it. So I don't know if you could see the angle really here. This is just a scrap piece of ash, but just imagine that this is a, a table leg. There is an angle to it. So because the front jaw has the ovals in the front, the, the jaw can like twist side to side. So you can clamp angled pieces in here, which makes it really easy. And the workpiece holds super tight. And then you could just plane away, even though the piece is angled and not straight. So I hope that this was helpful for some of you guys out there. I'll put a link down to this hardware kit down below. This wasn't sponsored or anything. I just thought this would be helpful for people who were looking to get in affordable quality mox and vice. So thank you to WD40 for sponsoring this video and thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Today I'm going to build a mox and vice using this kit that you can purchase for under... <laughs> 
and that might help with the clamping pressure. Is that my kids on the bus? What time is it? 